Hey, uh, first off, I want to apologize to anybody who thought that this was a History of Gear video, uh, and I have Warren Miller's sleeping bag. I do not. Uh, nobody does. You'll find out more about that in the rest of the video. But this is a video uh, where we're going to make the sleeping bag that Warren Miller designed. Uh, it comes from an article in Forest and Stream magazine in 1919, and we're going to talk a little bit about Miller's life, and then we'll talk about the design, and then the materials used, and then we will get into the actual construction of the bag. Now, I'm not going to tell you how many videos this is going to take. I have learned in the past year that I really suck at figuring out how many videos it's going to take to finish a project. Okay? I thought I could do my fixing to go camping series in two videos. It took me six. Okay? So all I'm going to tell you is at the end of this video will be a link to the next video. Okay? Uh, and I will be releasing them simultaneously. And in each one of the following ones, there will be a link not only to the next video, but to the previous video, just in case you come in in the middle somewhere. Okay? That make any sense? All right. And then let me just get this out of the way at the very beginning of the video so I don't have to plug it in somewhere else. If you find any of my videos entertaining or educational and it gives you information you want, Please keep in mind that other people want the same information, okay? But it's a little bit difficult for YouTube to find you and put you together with this information uh, with, without you liking the video, and subscribing to my channel, and watching to the end, okay? That's the way the YouTube algorithm works. I don't care about the views, really. Nice to have a couple bucks. I'm not going to, I think the most I've ever made in, in the past 10 years, I made $679, something like that. I'm not going to get rich off YouTube, okay? But please do those things because what that does is people who are searching for the same thing you are find it easier if you click those buttons that say, hey, I found this, y'all come over here, okay? All right. Now let's get into the video. Let's talk about who Warren Miller was. Okay, Warren Miller is one of the icons of the classic camping period. Or if you want to, the bushcrafting, one of the original bushcrafting guys who was a contemporary of fellows like Horace Kephart and Dan Beard, but a lot of people don't know as much about Miller as they do Kephart, and that's a ding-dang shame. So I hope I can help write that with this video. Uh, I'm also going to direct you to a blog post that David Westcott made in 2012. This is where I am getting most of my biographical information from uh, for uh Warren Miller, okay? And, and I do want to say, save this link, maybe even print it to PDF and save it. Uh, in this blog post, uh, David uh, references um, an article written in a blog called uh, the, uh, the Woods Life, which was one of them. I, I went to that site religiously, but in the intervening years, He's basically, he didn't pay his uh, internet fees or whatever, the domain fees, and it shut down. You know, you can no longer get to it. I wished I had uh, taken copies or, or made PDFs of everything that the Woods Life uh, had done. Uh, I can't 
I'll have to use the Wayback Machine on the Internet Archive to see if I can find stuff that I need. David Westcott is one of the fathers of modern day classic camping, he along with Steve Watts. If you can, I very highly recommend you go and get David Westcott's book, Camping in the Old Style. That book is what inspired me to enter into this classic camping thing. Okay? Alright, so with all that out of the way, let me say that Warren Miller was born in 1878, some sources say 1875, others say 1876, okay? He died in Massachusetts in uh, 1960. During the Spanish-American War, he served on board a ship called the USS Glacier, which was a supply and provisions ship that spent five months in the West Indies uh, during the Spanish-American War, uh, providing provisions to the troops on shore in Cuba and to ships at sea that were um, doing the blockade of Santiago Harbor. You should get into, if you're getting into classic camping, you should get into that history, the Spanish, Spanish, more, blah, 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 the history of the Spanish-American War. Uh, during the First World War, Miller uh, served on board the USS Utah, which was a battleship at the time. Uh, it, coincidentally, it was one of the ships the Japanese sunk at Pearl Harbor, although by that time it wasn't being used as a mainline battleship anymore. Uh, he is educated as a mechanical engineer. He holds three mechanical patents from that time. One of them has something to do with equipment in uh, uh, torpedo launching stuff. I don't know nothing about that. That was in the Army. That squid stuff. I don't need that. Uh, but uh, he was a veteran, and, and uh, in, in many of the articles he wrote for uh, uh, Forest and Stream, he signs himself as Lieutenant Warren H. Miller. Okay? He was the editor of Forest and Stream from about 1910 to 1918, and basically guided the very beginning of, of that publication. Uh, to, so that it got to the point where it still exists today, more than a hundred years later. He gave that publication a firm foundation, supported writers like Zane Gray as part of the uh, Forest and Stream publication. Tough job because at the beginning it was a weekly publication, not a monthly publication. Now, when he left Forest and Stream in 1918 to go uh, full-time writing. He, he's responsible. He has wrote more than 30 books. Most of them uh, aimed at adolescent boys. Uh, the foreword to one of his books says, if you are reading this book, you are either a 12-year-old boy or the father of a 12-year-old boy. And this is at a period when 12-year-old boys did a whole lot more than sit on the couch and play Game Boy, or whatever the current thing is right now. Uh, he inspired adventure and, and uh, resourcefulness and life in the outdoors during this period. And many boys and men of the 20th century benefited from this uh, high testosterone stuff, okay? The article that we're talking about in 1919, that he did in 1919, he did shortly after leaving the uh, as editor of Forest and Stream, and two years before the publication of this book. As far as we're concerned, uh, The Sportsman's Workshop, is probably his most important publication because we focus on the making your own gear of this classic camping uh, period and that's because a good deal of the gear being used by folks back then was stuff they made themselves. Now, 
Miller wrote a lot about camping, so he did a lot of camping. Uh, David Abercrombie was a frequent companion with him, and, and a good many of his books grew out of these, these uh, expeditions that they would take to places like Utah and Montana and stay for weeks at a time. Uh, in 1945, Miller contracted uh, cancer. I believe it was a gastric cancer. And he pretty much ceased his outdoor life and his writing. Uh, his last book was done in uh, 1946. And about that time, uh, he realized that uh, his health wasn't going to allow him to stay in Massachusetts, which is where he lived at the time, over the winters. So they purchased a home in Florida, and they spent uh, the winters in Florida and the summers in the home in Massachusetts. And by 1954, uh, that became too much of a burden, and he instructed his son uh, and uh, other family members, gave them a long list of the things that they should take from the home in Massachusetts and bring to Florida. Uh, not on that list was his camping gear. He considered it old and obsolete, he hadn't used it for years, and it all ended up in the trash, including this sleeping bag we're going to make. As a matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why I want to make this sleeping bag. This is something that should be present in today's world, is a representation of the design for this sleeping bag that Warren Miller did. Warren Miller designed the very popular, one of the most successful tent designs of the 20th century, the Forester's Forester tent. Uh, in about the same time, he made this sleeping bag. Now, the Forester tent remained a staple among the Boy Scouts until the late 1970s uh, when Eureka came out with the Timberline. Now, that's a very long time to have a tent be popular and in general use. The man's an icon. We should treat him that way. We should treat his memory that way. And that's why we're going to make this sleeping bag. Okay? All right. Next up, the design and the materials and a little bit of a mystery. Okay, we're, we're going to leave this here. Um, first off, we're running about 12, 13 minutes in the main body of this. And I don't, like I said, I don't want him to get too much beyond 20 minutes. And the second reason is, I said, there is a mystery here. And while I was looking for pictures to go with this video, I stumbled across another piece of evidence in the mystery. So I got to study that so that I can report back as accurately as I possibly can what I think is the solution to the mystery. So, click on that next link. Who knows what in the cornbread hell I'm going to come up with. We'll see you down the trail.